Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a new video. I hope you're all doing well. Today we'll be going thrifting, or should I say charity shopping. That's what we call it based here in the UK. Now I'm going to be taking you around eight different charity shops here on the south coast of England. Starting off in this British Heart Foundation shop, which sells furniture. This is a great charity shop for larger items at really reduced prices. All these items, they've been inspected and cleaned and it's like they're new. If you're in the UK, the British Heart Foundation is a great charity to donate your larger items to, your sofas, your beds, because they will collect for free. You phone them up and they'll collect for free, which is fantastic, rather than paying perhaps £25 for them to be taken to the tip. Just remember, if you've got a sofa, to keep the fire safety certificate on there. It's normally a sticker, otherwise they won't be able to take it. As I go around the charity shops, keep an eye out. Let me know in the comments below if you see anything that you would have picked up. And at the end, I'll be doing a massive haul and showing you all the bits and pieces that I picked up, not only today, but also from my travels from the last month or so. So a really massive haul. And that will include decor, Easter bits, stamps. If you're used to my post-crossing videos, there'll be some stamps and more. So do stick around. I don't spot everything in the charity shop. Sometimes I spot things when I'm looking back at the video. I think, oh, I wish I'd picked that up. Other times it's when people leave a comment in the box below. And then I think, oh, yeah, that was a great item. Why didn't I see that? Why didn't I pick it up? So do drop a comment in the box below. In the UK, we don't have these giant charity shops that, you, that I've seen online. We don't have any humongous goodwill or anything like that. We have smaller shops that are on the high street smaller shops on the high street but then we have a number of them all in a row it gives great um, variety and great selection there um, and each of these shops is a charity each one is a different charity so your money will be going to help different charities so british heart foundation helps with um, research into heart conditions i believe um, and there's all different charities as we work our way up the high street so you can choose which charity you want to give your donations to and you can choose which shops you want to buy in based on which charities you like but each charity shop has a different feel a different style they each have different pricing different focus so again you might pick your charity shop based on the feel of the shop the friendliness of the volunteers the layout of the shop there's all different things that you could uh, pick your charity shop for so let me know what you look for in a charity shop is it the good prices is it the layout do you like a rummage or do you like them to be more organized i think i like somewhere in between so i don't like it to be too neat it's too much like a shop and the people know exactly how much everything's worth and they price it up quite highly but have less stuff in there but equally i don't like a sh uh, charity shop where everything is all bundled in like i've seen we don't have it quite the same way as in america uh, with the Goodwills where I've seen that they just take it into, put everything into big containers, just sort of dump everything in and then the customers rifle through the bins to find out the bits they want and none of it ever really goes on a shelf. Now I don't think I would enjoy that so much. I definitely don't enjoy shopping in Primark when everything's sort of all bundled on the tables. So um, I like things to be hung up. I like things to be hung up if it's closed, hung up by size. I find that really helps. Maybe size and colour, that's nice. <laughs> um, and I think the Rowan's Hospice does that, but size is definitely a good one. Colour's quite handy if you're looking for a certain item. I definitely like it when all the jeans are together, all the black trousers are together, all the smart things, all the casual things, that really helps. But the more that the charity shop sorts things, it tends to be the higher the prices. So as I wander around, I'm mainly focusing on the home decor and the books. I don't know, let me know below if you'd like to see me rummaging through the clothes. I just sense that that might not be quite as interesting for you watching me rummage for clothes. But I could be wrong and I do need to go out and buy some new clothes or secondhand clothes. Um, so let me know and I can take you along with me when I do that. If that's something you'd enjoy watching and seeing what we have here in the UK. If you're enjoying this video, please do like and subscribe. Both help me more than you can know. And both are completely free. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. If that subscribe button is already ticked, please don't tick it again because that will unsubscribe you. If you're subscribed, you should get to know 
each and every time I post a vid video, which at the moment is twice per week, but I try and do it at least once per week. And if you aren't getting notifications and you would like to, please also click the notification bell and that will ensure or should ensure that you get to know each and every time I post a video. Once we've had a look around these charity shops, as I say, we're going to eight different charity shops today. But once we've had a look around these charity shops, I will be to look through all the bits that I've got, not only today, but also over the last month or so. I've been squirrelling away bits and pieces on my travels. Um, bits from my... Last week I did a trip around Marks and Spencers and Flying Tiger, um, looking at Easter supplies, Easter basket supplies, and I've got a few bits and pieces from there. So I'll be showing you my Easter haul. I'll also show you bits and pieces that I've got from the charity shop, obviously. And I also placed an order online for some stamps for our post crossing videos. Not only do I post thrifting videos, I also post videos about post and snail mail and happy mail and all things like this. And I've got some stamps which I am keen to show you. And also coming up, I'm very excited to say that coming up, there will be some more outdoor travel type videos. We're in March now, um, the weather is improving. And um, yes, yeah, so moving into the nice weather over the summer, I will be going back true to my name, true to style, where I started out and I'll be doing some travel videos around the British Isles. Um, I will, of course, be looking for opportunities to thrift and postcards to pick up to send. So keeping on theme, but I will, I'm very excited to say we're going back to the name. Uh, tiny mouse travels and doing lots of travels around the British Isles and um, around the south coast of England and who knows possibly getting that passport out and going a bit further afield so in the UK we can go I live in England so I can go all across England um, I can go across Wales Scotland and Northern Ireland without needing a passport um, if I want to go to the Republic of Ireland, I need a passport and if I want to go to Europe again I need like France I need to get my passport out even though living in the south coast of England France is far closer to me than Scotland but um, so there may be a passport trip coming up and of course if I do that I will include that on this channel I will look for postcards I'll look for I'll look for thrifting and I'll take you around on all those outdoor travels with me and look for lots of exciting places to go um, and if I do decide to do a passport trip I will let you know so you can give me some recommendations. So as I say, currently I post two videos each and every week. So do stick around and check out those videos. I've got some playlists. I've got a, a Thrift With Me UK playlist. Um, so if you're liking this video, there is a playlist and I'll link it at the end of the video so you can see all the times I've gone out thrifting um, in the UK. I've gone to some quite interesting cities, um, some fancy cities. And it's amazing to see how the items vary from city to from town to town.
Now let's have a look at all the bits and pieces in my massive haul. Let me know which ones you like. Let me know if you have any recommendations. So I'm starting off with a post crossing theme. Here are my stamps. So the first set of stamps that I've got here is some Jane Austen stamps. If you follow my videos, you'll know that a couple of weeks ago I went up to Chawton and saw Jane Austen's house and I took you with me. And I also then went thrifting in Alton. So if you like that, do check it out. I really enjoy Jane Austen's works and all the films and TV programs that have come from, from it. But I'm really lucky because I live very close to the area where she lived for most of her life. Um, so these stamps, they're fantastic. They've got Jane Austen Sense and Sensibility and that's a first class stamp. Now Sense and Sensibility for me it always reminds me of the Emma Thompson and uh, Kate Winslet version. Um, you can see that on Netflix I believe at the moment. The next stamp is this first class stamp Jane Austen Pride and Prejudice and that is her looking at the portrait of Mr Darcy when she goes to visit his estate with her aunt and uncle she doesn't the aunt and uncle don't know that she's got a connection to mr darcy um perhaps they think she doesn't like him that's as far as it goes and they go on a tour and visit the house when he's not there so she doesn't really want to go but she doesn't have a way of explaining it to her aunt and uncle so she goes for a visit and the housekeeper shows them around and she sees his portrait and then the next stamp is jane austen's man mansfield park and that's a 77 p stamp and then it's Jane Austen's Emma, which is 77p, and I remember this. This, for me, would be the Gwyneth Paltrow version of Emma. And then the next one is Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey, which is £1.28. And then Jane Austen's Persuasion, which is £1.28. I think Persuasion didn't... Wasn't there a new version of this? And I think it had with, um, Richard E. Grant in it and the actress that's dating the cold placing i can't remember her name if you know let me know below has really escaped me for this moment but so fantastic i have stamps there and i think these are going to well i know these are going to go in my collection i'm not going to be posting these out the next set of stamps i have here is these post boxes and they've got a first class a 56p an 81p and a 90p and it says the earliest known surviving post slot post slot was placed in the wall of wakefield post office in 1809 so that's so it shows you how long we've had the royal mail and we've had post boxes in um, the uk um, so i really like these again i'm going to keep these in my collection and if you follow me uh, look at some of my youtube shorts um, or follow me over on Instagram, you'll see me posting my post crossing postcards in a number of these post boxes. I always try and go to a different post box and show you, take you along with me and show you some of the different red post boxes that we have in the UK. The next set of stamps I've got here is this Total Eclipse set. Um, there's four and they're 66, there's four of them and they're 64p each. In total, it was £2.56. Now, I, not to sound too old, but I do remember the total eclipse. I was still at school um, when it happened, and it happened on the 11th of August, 1999, 12 minutes past 11 and 18 seconds. Um, I know exactly where I was stood with this and who I saw it with. It's one of those moments I'll always remember. But the total eclipse itself happened in Falmouth, which is down in Cornwall. So I'll be keeping these and adding those to my collection. It's a real lovely memory. I've got, do you, were you there or did you um, see this? Have you seen a total eclipse somewhere else in the world? Do you remember those little devices you had to look through so you didn't look directly at the sun? Um, not to sound too much like a, oh, what's that song? Don't look back into the sun. Is it the ordinary boys? Anyway, but were you there? Do you remember seeing this um, or, or hearing the news coverage about this? But 1999, so that's 20, almost 25 years ago. Oh, crumbs. Okay, let's stop talking about this one now. The next set of stamps I've got is this one, it's weather, so it's got the rain, fair, stormy and very dry and it's 19p, 27p, 45p and 65p and I couldn't resist getting this. This stamp up here has some sort of colour change properties when it's either warm or in UV light and so I had to get that so I'm so pleased that I've got this set um, and it's all together so that's going in my collection as well. 
the next item I've got actually was from thrifting and I found this this has got its tag on but I found it for one pound um, in a local charity shop and it's a little coin purse so um, it's not very big so I'm not sure I don't think I'll keep money in here but I'm not sure what to keep in there maybe I'll keep some stamps in there but it all does depend it needs a very much needs a good clean a good clean up to see if these marks come off but for a pound thought that was a good idea to to grab this obviously being part of post crossing so if you've got any tips and tricks for getting this off i think it's leather or faux leather um, and these stains they look like just where it's been stored somewhere for a long time uh, and it came with its tag so i did have a look online after i came home um, and this i think was originally from the house of fraser and was around about the 30 pound mark when it was bought so really pleased with that maybe it was bought as a gift and someone then didn't didn't use it but really pleased with that as long as it comes up um, well let me know what you'd use this for then some more items from the charity shop if you know from my previous blogs you'll know that I'm, I enjoy reading Sophie Kinsella um, and this one I've got your number I think I've read it before I won't give any spoilers but I'm happy to read it again and this one was just 50p from the charity shop and it was published in 2012 so yeah if you've read this and you enjoyed it let me know no spoilers and it says um i've lost it the only thing in the world i wasn't supposed to lose my engagement ring it's been in Man mangus's family for three generations and now the very same day his parents are coming i've lost it the very same day do not hyperventilate poppy stay positive so that does ring bells now, the engagement ring, losing the engagement ring. So I don't think I remember this fully, so I'll still enjoy reading it. But I'm sure as I get through, I'll remember some of the plot points. But really uh, looking forward to rereading that again. The next item I've got is another Sophie Kinsella. I think this is quite an early Sophie Kinsella when she just swapped over from Madeline Wickham to Sophie Kinsella um, name. Um, it's called 20s girl it says she's having the time of her life and this is a pound i remember reading this i remember reading this quite some years ago um, and it's obviously going to be the early style of sophie kinsella um, which she has sort of had eras in her writing if you've read her books i think she's had eras um, and you can sort of tell where she's moved with the time got older um, as we all have um, and so her books have sort of moved with her and her style of writing have moved with the times so this one says oh it doesn't have a blurb on the back it just says reasons to love so if you can say so i don't have to tell you those and this was published see she hasn't got many um books out at that point just quite a few of the sh um, shopaholic series um, which was turned into a great film and that one was from 2009 so hardback and again really enjoying rediscovering this one then i picked up some books i want to say that these were um well pick up two books actually i want to say that these were tempe um, and these are some of the classic ladybird books and so when these were originally published um this one here was 60p and this one here was 70p they've both got a barcode on so that's some of the ways that you can age um age a penguin book so the very early ones don't have the barcode on and the price like with stamps the price tells you roughly if you um you can look up when these were published from their price i have to try my best not to collect ladybird books otherwise <laughs> i'd have a house full of them but um i thought these looked like great stories to have a little browse of so we've got zorak the spaceman and that's got two stories in there And it says down here, it was published. Now it's got the, oh, it's a first edition. Oh my goodness, I'm so pleased with this. Um, and it was published MCM Al XXX and then two. So that's two and then those three X's is 30, 32. But I don't think it's going to be um, 1932. I think it's going to be 1982, 1982. Let me know in the comments below if you agree. So MCM Al, which I'm guessing is 50, XXX 30. So that's, no, let me know below. I'm, I'm guessing 1982 for that. But I'm really excited to see it's got the first edition there. Now then let's look at the Oscar the Cat. So again, 
I, they seem to go together. Perhaps the person had both of these. Uh, really comical little illustrations in here. And again, it's another first edition, my goodness. And it's got that same date there. So I think that will be 1982. So if you like these, let me know. And how lucky I am to find those first editions there. Then keeping with the book theme, this was also 10p. Um, I just had to pick this up for sort of retro sake, maybe get a few ideas. And it says step-by-step presents, cheerful clowns, although I think they look quite scary clowns, cheerful clowns, printed table mats, felt badges, coiled mats and holders, things to eat and wrapping up. But the things to eat is this marzipan down here and they possibly have coloured that with some quite strong um, food colouring. So, you know, it's all its time. Um... And so let's see if this has got a date. So 1977 and it's first printed in 1977. It doesn't say first edition there. Um, but yeah, this looks, this looks like a great idea. Yeah, just these macram, macrame, macrame baskets. Um, they're still quite popular now. So um, I'm sure we could make one of those and make it look quite um, modern. Uh, the knitted dog lead, I'm not sure I would risk my dog on a knitted dog lead. Um, so some great, very dated, but at the same time, pot holders. I think I knew someone that had a pair of these pot holders. Perhaps they were made as a gift with this book. Um, and the uh, the hangers, yeah, we all had one of those in our cupboard at, at one point in time. So it's even these pictures that they've... Uh, I'm not sure I'd wear those trendy canvas shoes, but perhaps they were trendy at one point. But see, even the background images that they've used, you know, these sweets and the mag the cartoons there. Um, yeah, so really do like this book. Um, but maybe we'll try, let me know if you'd like me to try some of these crafts out on the channel and show you how they go. That could be quite interesting. So I'll go back to that first cover there. Um, so they've got... They've got things, yeah, just let me know. I can't see a good description, but let me know if you'd like me to try one of those out on the channel. Another thing that I got at the charity shop was this lovely box. I think, I want to say it was five pounds. The lady, when I bought it, she said, oh, perhaps I didn't charge enough, <laughs> not at all. And I quickly sort of made my, you know, say goodbye and left before she tried to charge me extra. Um, so she thought that this design here, with this sort of shallot inlay, had perhaps come from Egypt. She saw a lot of these boxes in Egypt when she was growing up. So it was lovely to get that little bit of history from her from this box. And when it opens up, um, I have bought these uh, little, I think they're called wimpies. So we have this hedgehog. He's the one that originally caught my eye. He was a pound or 175 so he really caught my eye and actually he might not be a wimpy he might just be, be similar uh he might just be similar but really love that little guy there um and next this is a wimpy um so we have this otter and perhaps he's holding a fish um so this little otter character then we have this, and I want to say that's a squirrel. Um, we have this horse. And another horse. And not to be confused with the horses, we have this cow. And I believe these were originally... These were originally found in Christmas crackers. I don't know if they were anywhere before that, but I know that when I was growing up, we often had these in our Christmas crackers and I have got a little collection of my own from, from Christmases gone past. Then we have another otter and he's showing off his, that might not be a, that might be a beaver with a piece of wood. But these look like they're the same cast but then they've been the same mold but then they've been painted differently and then that's the same with the horses they look like they're the same mold but then they've been painted differently 
and then we've also got this I'm going to say he's a gorilla and on the bottom you can see 175 um, and then this koala now koala is fantastic I've got some very early videos on my channel of when I went to see the koalas at Longleat Zoo and I was actually lucky enough to have um, a keeper experience with the koalas so I have actually touched a koala very briefly touched a koala under the supervision of the keepers and yeah it's lovely to have this as a little reminder of that I could tell you more the the information given at the talk was very informative I now know a lot of koala facts but I won't on this video um, tag you those and then here now this is is he an otter or is he an otter but again and these also these otters remind me of the otters at Marwau Zoo so fantastic um, which I've made a video of most recently, I think, um, a video of My Well Zoo. So if you'd like to check that out, do watch that on my channel. But yeah, so which one of these is your favourite? I want to say the hedgehog because of his character. But then again, I really do like this koala because he reminds me of that keeper experience that I had. So let me know which one of these would be your favourite. Keeping with the ceramics, I also found these little fellas recently at a local charity shop. I think we had some of these maybe from the 80s or the 90s and I just couldn't resist them when I uh, saw them. So there's three little tortoises here. Maybe they were originally made when the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, was popular um, in the 90s. Um, there's no markings on the bottom, although this one, not that one, this one here does say golden, can you see that there? Golden something giftware. Now were these, did these originally come from the pound shop? Um, obviously when a pound went a lot further. Let me know if you know where these came from, but really do like these little fellas. So I guess you could say I now collect these little tor tortoise um, figures as well. But yeah, I really like those. Now moving on to my bits from Flying Tiger. Um, my One of my recent vlogs, I took you around Marks and Spencers and also Flying Tiger looking at all their Easter bits and pieces or their Easter decorations um, and I couldn't resist in Flying Tiger picking up this sheet of stickers it was 99p you may have seen me looking at these Flying Tiger is one of my favourite places to look for stationery now that Paper Chase is no longer here in the UK um, it was always a little bit cheaper than Paper Chase it's so sad that Paper Chase isn't there but that's okay we still do have Flying Tiger so I picked these up for 99p uh, keeping with Flying Tiger I also picked up you may see me looking at these as well I also picked up these napkins with the Easter bunnies on now I'll either use these as napkins or I have a little craft that I've got in mind to use these for I also had a cheeky looking pound lad I don't think I took you along for that but I found these 10 freezer bobs for £1 um, and it says to plant them between February and May so that's perfect timing now. Um, I love freezers when they are uh, cut and when they're in a bouquet so I thought fantastic. I picked up uh, three packets, I've got 30 bulbs. I'm planning to plant them together and then hopefully they'll do their thing and we'll have year after year have freezers that can be either enjoyed in the garden as they are enjoyed by the bees um, or have the option to be popped into cut flowers for the house or for gifts just thought as amazing value 10 for a pound and they'll come back each and every year so if you're enjoying this video please do like and subscribe both have my channel more than you can learn both are completely free then one of the last bits that I got was this National Garden Centre scheme, Hampshire and Isle of Wight. And I've seen these when I've travelled a little bit further. I've seen that Sussex uh, or Surrey do them as well. So each county has their own. So I've picked up the Hampshire and Isle of Wight one. I didn't pick up the one 
um, I think it was the Surrey one that I saw. I didn't pick that up, I'm wishing I had now. Um, but this is great, it's got all sorts of bits and pieces in here. It's got some adverts and then it's also got the opening dates for these gardens throughout the year. And I've circled this one here because in May, the first weekend in May, which might be a bank holiday, there's a Bluebell Woods that is open and I may go to that one. I may just, I know locally where there's some bluebells. So that's just a real reminder of me, for me to around that time, look out for some bluebells, but there's fantastic gardens here. And you know, it's just, if you have one of these, if you pop into your local garden center and pop up your, pick up your local one of these, um, you'll get to see what's near you. So may well take you along to some of these gardens when I go. At this time in the video that we normally have our code word. What can our code word be? this week. The code word, if you drop it in the comments box below, then I'll know that you have watched the video to this point and I really enjoy seeing who's got to this point. So our code word this week, let's have hedgehog. So because of this little cute fella here, let's have our code word for this week being hedgehog. Did we have hedgehog a few weeks ago? I can't remember. <laughs> I may well recycle these code words. Um, but yeah, in honour of this little fella here, let's make this week's code word hedgehog. So do drop that in the comments box below. Thank you for watching. Until next time.